Welcome to the Machinery Zone. Here in Essex, farmers grow a huge variety of crops such as potatoes, peas, carrots and onions. All types of food that I'm sure you like to eat. But the most grown crop in this region would be cereals such as wheat and barley, which are used to make bread, biscuits, cakes, pasta, breakfast cereal and even beer. Today we are going to look at some of the machinery used to produce cereal crops here in Essex. Before seeds are planted into the ground to grow, the soil has to be prepared properly. This is a plough. A plough turns over the soil, burying straw and weeds left over from the previous year's harvest and leaves fresh soil on the top. The tractor pulls the plough through the ground and blades on the plough called mould boards cut and turn the soil over. Ploughs come in many sizes. This is a six furrow plough, which means it has six mould boards. The biggest plough I have ever seen had 14 furrows, so over twice the size of this plough. So here we have here a New Holland tractor. It's four wheel drive, it's 315 horsepower, and it's going to be used today to pull this plough on the back. So on the back of the tractor, we have this Lemkin six furrow plough. The idea of the plough is to turn weathered, weedy soil in and bring out fresh soil ready for the seed bed. In the course of the day, this machine can do up to 60 to 70 acres. So if you imagine a football pitch as one acre, it can do up to 60, 70 times one of those. Once the seed bed is ready, we use a drill or planter to put seed into the ground so it can grow. Most planting in Essex is carried out in the autumn months, depending on the type of crops. Some are planted in the spring. The planting machine has a big tank which holds the seeds to be planted into the ground. The seeds are metered out at the bottom of the tank and are then blown down plastic tubes towards the ground. You will see on the back of the planter there are discs which cut into the soil, making a slot for the seeds to be blown into, and then wheels behind that press the soil back together so that the seed can grow properly. So after the tractor and plough has left the field that you've just seen, we then come in this machine here. So this is a seed sowing machine, more commonly known as a seed drill. So the seeds are actually loaded into the big tank and that can hold over 50 million seeds in there. Um, and then it's, as the, as the seed drill goes through the soil, these discs here break it down into smaller pieces and then the seed is blown through all these pipes here and then the seed goes through these discs and is planted into the soil. So this seed sow machine comes in a whole host of sizes, this one being six metres wide. Um, now this machine on a good day can sow over a hundred acres of um, seeds and that equates to over a hundred football pitches and typically this machine would be on a farm around 3,000 acres in size so that is 3,000 football pitches over the whole farm so that can sow quite a bit uh, of an area. To help the seeds grow farmers spread fertiliser onto the fields which makes the plants strong and healthy. This is normally done in the early spring when the days are getting longer and the sun shines much more than in the darker winter months. It is important that the fertiliser is spread evenly over the whole field. You can see this machine does this by dropping the fertiliser from the metal tank onto the fast spinning discs which then throw the fertiliser out into the field. Some spreaders can throw the fertiliser up to 40 metres from the tractor. Throughout the year, farmers have to be very careful their crops don't fail because of diseases such as leaf blotch, yellow rust, mil mildew and mould. 
Crops can also be attacked by insects such as aphids, beetles and midges and can be overgrown by weeds such as black grass and wild oats. To keep their crops healthy from all these problems, farmers use sprayers to apply specialist chemicals onto the crops. The chemicals are mixed with water and are sprayed very evenly across the whole field so every leaf of every plant is covered by the chemical and water mixture. The liquid is held in a plastic tank on the spraying machine and air is used to force the liquid down narrow tubes and out through what is called a nozzle to make a fine spray onto the crop. So once the crops are planted with the seed drill that you saw previously, once the crop has grown, um, we come through with a, a machine called a crop sprayer. And what this is used for is to add weed killers and insecticides um, and to spray them onto the growing crop. So this machine here, we tip all the chemicals into this little tank here and then it sucks it into this bigger tank which holds 1900 litres of water. So the chemicals mix with the water and then towards the back of the machine here these are called spray booms and these unfold to 24 metres wide and then the, the weed killers and the chemicals are sprayed out through these nozzles here at a metered amount um, onto the growing crop. When the crop has fully grown it turns yellow in colour and is ready to be collected by what we call a combine harvester. Combine harvesters are large pieces of machinery and they carry out a number of processes. Firstly, a big knife on the front of the machine cuts the crop and gathers it up on what is called a header. This is a wide piece right at the front of the combine harvester. From here, the crop goes inside the combine harvester where the straw and seeds, sometimes called grain, are separated out. The straw comes out of the back of the combine and the seeds are collected in a big metal tank at the top of the combine. When this tank is full, it is emptied by a big unloading spout from the combine into trailers pulled by tractors. Combines are very complex machines and can cost up to half a million pounds to buy. Once the seeds are in the trailer, they are transported back to the farmyard so they can be stored until they are sold. So once the crops are fit and ready, we use this machine here called a Combine Harvester. It's a New Holland product, it has a 500 plus horsepower. The idea of this machine is to cut the final crop. We attach on the front of the Combine this header. This header is 28 foot wide, um, the headers also go up to anything up to 45 foot. The idea of the header is to drive into the crop and actually cut the crop. The crop is then cut and it is then taken up what we call an elevator into the machine. As the crop is entered into the machine, it is confronted by a series of drums. The idea of the drums is to thrash the crop. Also, the crop is then separated using a sieving system. After the crop is sieved, the good grain then goes up into the grain tank at the top here. That can hold anything up to 11 tonne. Once the grain tank is full, it tells the operator um, that he then needs a tractor and trailer to unload into. And this is where this long spout comes into play. So a tractor and trailer will draw up alongside this combine and the operator will then unload the good grain, which will then go into the grain store and eventually into the mills. So at the back of the machine here, the straw um, exits the machine, where it'll either be left in a row, where a tractor and baler will then come and bale it which will then be used either for livestock or it can go into power stations to be burnt for energy. Failing that, the straw is then put through what we call a chopper. It is then chopped and it is then spread across the, the land ready for cultivating back in. The straw that comes out of the back of the combine is used to feed and bed animals and many farmers collect the straw 
This is called baling. Balers come in many shapes and sizes. Some are round, some are rectangular, some are small and some are very big. The tractor tows the baler which collects the straw off the ground and presses it together to make a solid mass of straw. This is called a bale. Some of the very big bales can weigh up to 700 kilos, which is the same weight as a very big horse. So once the combine harvester has harvested the field, it leaves the straw in rows behind the combine. So then we come in with this machine in what's called a round baling machine. So the tractor straddles the swath of straw and then the straw is picked up with these tines here which rotate round and then it goes inside the machine and it is rolled round and round and round and as it goes the the roll of straw gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So once it reaches a certain size, a, a coil of net is wound round the bale to hold it together, and then it is ejected out the back of the baling machine round here where these rubber belts are. We're now round the rear of the baling machine, and as you can see inside, these rollers here are what actually roll the roll of straw round and round and round and then these belts here keep its shape and make it bigger as it rolls around and then it, as the door lifts up the bale of straw rolls out of the back. The final piece of farm machinery we're going to look at today is a telehandler. A telehandler is a machine which is used to lift and carry material and so has many uses on a farm. Another name for a telehandler is a forklift truck and they are used to load and unload lorries with goods coming on and off the farm, as well as loading seeds into the planter, fertiliser onto the fertiliser spreader, and lifting bales to feed animals and for general maintenance tasks around the farm. On many farms, the telehandler is the most used machine. So here we have the New Holland Telehandler. It has a 9 metre reach and it can lift up to 3.5 tonnes. So we use this machine to go and gather up the bales from the field, especially before the weather turns. The bales are then loaded onto tractor and trailers and they are carted back to the farm and stored into the barn. They are then used either for livestock or they can go to um, power energy plants. With the crops taken off the field, the farmer's year starts all over again, with ploughing, cultivating the land, planting, etc. A farmer's work is never finished. <laughs>